Bob, it's uh, really great to have you back at Definity. For the ones that don't know you, give us a quick introduction to yourself and uh, to Odin.fun. Sure. Yeah, really happy to be here. I'm Bob Bodily, CEO and co-founder of Odin Fund. Odin Fund is the fastest way to trade Bitcoin tokens. So you can, you know, log in with the Bitcoin wallet, deposit Bitcoin to the platform, and then trade Bitcoin tokens at the speed of light, essentially. We are building on ICP, leveraging all of the great cross-chain features that ICP has to offer. And we've been growing like crazy. You know, just hit 60,000 users. We hit 3,000 BTC in volume. Traction has been really great across the Ordinals, BRC20, and Runes communities. And, you know, it's it's just been a whirlwind of, you know, interest in users and, and problems and uh, a fun in the last two months. Yeah. Could you walk us through this whirlwind that has been, you know, since ETH Denver? What, what has been the sort of the latest developments and challenges you have faced during this period? Yeah. So we've had continual growth, you know, growth in users, growth in volume, growth in tokens created, growth in tokens bonded, you know, growth in the number of memes and the number of communities and the number of developers that we've onboarded into the into this Odin Fun ecosystem. And we've also had, you know, challenges. You know, we've had bumps and bruises a lot along the way as we just just scale up. You know, heads have been down. We, we, we've been in the trenches building. You know, we've kind of taken a bit of a breather on like feature development. So, you know, for for the users out there who may be watching, you know, we're we're in the trenches every single day. The platform in terms of like infrastructure and architecture is, you know, a million times better today than it was, you know, even just a couple of weeks ago. And we have tons of feature development now coming coming down the pipeline. We've uh, scaled up the team. You know, we've added a couple of developers, added some people on the support side. And so this is all kind of like setting us up for, you know, the the next wave. Uh, often I describe you as a sort of an ICP maxi, but I, also I describe you as an application or a user experience maxi, right? And, and in order to facilitate this scaling, you have been forced to sort of move out of outside of, of, of ICP. What what components have you added in this sort of composite application building approach to, to achieve this uh, scaling? Yeah, I mean, I think I would probably call myself a user experience maxi. Yeah. Uh, that's that's probably the way to do it. I mean, creating a seamless user experience was essentially our top priority in building Odin Fun. Uh, we wanted speed, and we wanted like a native application feel. And there, you know, we we weren't going to give up speed or fantastic user experience. And so, our our entire architecture was built to enable a fantastic user experience. And ICP made this really easy. You know, with threshold signing with HTTP outcalls, with the ability to do account abstraction and chain abstraction and even like session keys, um, users can just come in with a Bitcoin wallet. They don't need any other wallet. They don't need to pay gas fees. They don't need to pay network fees. They don't need to go get any other token. They just come in with their Bitcoin, deposit to the platform, and then they're off to the races and all transactions are just two seconds. So you buy and then it's done in two seconds. Like it just feels blazingly fast. Yeah. And so user experience maxi, I think, is, you know, is, is an appropriate characterization. Yeah. But th then you have had to add these components outside of, of ICP to achieve this, this scaling. Well, what, what type of components have you had to add? Yeah. So, you know, everything, uh, all of the tokens, once they bond, live on Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. All of our trading logic happens within canisters on the ICP side. And then we have other scaling components, like we have an indexer, we have a Web2 API. We we don't host our front end on ICP yet. Um, that's you know strategic to you know take advantage of the edge network and caching and rate limiting and control that's offered by by other providers. And so we kind of have this, I don't know, I'll call it a hybrid stack yeah, yeah. where it's part Bitcoin, part ICP, part Web2, and we're kind of leveraging each for what it does best. Yeah. I remember you talking about yesterday about uh, Cloudflare and their, you know, denial of service uh, protection and, and stuff like that. And of course, ICP cannot offer that fully yet. Right, and it's something that's really important for us. Is you know, how can we give users the fastest front end experience, regardless of where they are in the world? Yeah. And how can we protect from denial of service attacks? And how can we, you know, scale up reasonably while still giving developers access to our tools and still, yeah. you know, growing to to you know, 60k users plus. So. And, and that is a good bridge to, to what I wanted to talk to you about, what, what we call the Odin.fun pattern. To, to achieve the success of Odin.fun, you have uh, used the, the technical components of ICP, but also you focus a lot on the user experience, and you also use these off-chain components. And it's all these components and methods combined that have sort of led you to, to the, this success. So, so if you would summarize what is the Odin.fun builder pattern for success, <laughs> what, what would that be? 
Yeah, uh, I think I might call Odin Fund the magnum opus of my blockchain career. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've built a lot of things over the years and with you know various amounts of success, but I think Odin Fund really, you know, strategically fit together in a way that maximized user experience. Yeah. And so, you know, we wanted it to be Bitcoin native. We wanted it to feel like a Bitcoin application. And um, ICP made it really easy by just like abstracting everything behind the scenes. Yeah. But also we weren't, you know, I wouldn't call myself an ICP maxi per se, because we don't have everything built on ICP. Um, and so, you know, take your top priority, which for us, it was speed. And it was, you know, not, not compromising on user experience. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you know, craft craft your architecture. So we have like a single canister model on ICP, which lets us do really fast transactions. And there are ways to potentially scale that up in the future. And then we have some off-chain components that just really facilitates, you know, really fast front-end updates and, you know, you know, a fast front-end for people, regardless of where they are in the world. And then connecting things on the cross-chain side as well. ICP has really great cross-chain tech that enables bringing in Bitcoin and enables us to do things that you can't do on Bitcoin L1. Yeah. Bitcoin L1 is too limiting for that, but Bitcoin is known around the world. You know, 90% of people have heard about Bitcoin. And so leveraging the unique affordances of Bitcoin and of ICP and of, you know, some Web2 tech, like mix that all together and you get, you know, you can craft a really fantastic tailored user experience. Yeah. So Bob, you are a US-based project. Can you share some some insights on maybe how the, the landscape has changed in the US in terms of regulatory changes, et cetera, recently, and how it is building in the US currently? Yeah, so we're uh, Delaware C Corp. Uh, you know, build, building in the US uh, historically has been very challenging. Um, previously, the regulatory environment in the US was very restrictive. You know, they took a, a regulation by enforcement type approach. And so, but now a lot of these suits are getting dropped and there's a lot, you know, with the current, uh, you know, regulatory environment with President Trump, regardless of whether you, you agree with his politics or not, the, the regulatory environment is significantly better now in the U.S. And so this opens up room for innovation. It, it opens up room for entrepreneurs that want to come in and build crypto businesses in the U.S. directly. Uh, and I think that over the next four years, I think we're going to see a lot more innovation and a lot more interesting developments in the crypto space in the US because of this change. And I think also if, if you look at tokens and what's happened with tokens, a lot of them have been, I don't know, kind of weak sauce tokens in a sense, like they haven't been fully, you know, like equity, for example, you can't really do equity as a token. Uh, but I think in the next four years, we're going to see a lot of innovation, a lot of growth in in this space and so i think the the us especially for the next four years is is, is a great place to build a crypto project in addition to all these uh, technical components that you have pieced together in a, in a really nice way there's also other sort of components such as you when, when a, a token you don't call it it graduates when it you know, bonds you also take part of the liquidity connected to that token and put it into the uh, amm to ensure that people can actually trade that token and that stood out to me as a, like one also a key determining factor, you know, if you would have done all these other things without doing that thing, the whole thing would have failed because in the end, people would not have been able to trade their tokens. Right. I think getting users and getting liquidity is the top challenge for, you know, you you solve the technical piece, yeah. you know, and that's and, and that's what the, the developer mind wants to solve is how can I like put, put all the pieces together? But then you have to figure out how do I get users? How do I get liquidity? How do I solve this? you know, chicken and the egg problem of like bootstrapping this this protocol. Yeah. And so we chose this pump fund model so you can come in, create tokens really easily. They only live on Odin Fund initially and then bootstrap liquidity up from there. Um, and I think that has given us um, a lot of traction in terms of just bootstrapping liquidity and trying to get some initial traction yeah. where, I mean, that's kind of the, I mean, even now moving forward, that's, that's our challenge is how do we go from, you know, where we are now, how do we 10x what we're doing and how do we go get tier one centralized exchanges uh, to, to list tokens from Odin Fund and how do we work with market makers and how do we partner with wallets and, and, and exchanges to just make this, you know, 10 times bigger. Yeah. So don't forget the users and don't forget the liquidity. Well, let that, that be the, yeah. the, the final words of this conversation. Great to meet you again. And, and, and thanks for this talk. Yeah, thanks so much.